at 2 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time today on Thursday the 2nd of November 2023. The world finally got to hear Now and Then as presented to us by The Beatles, billed as the last ever Beatles song. So, was it worth it? Anyone familiar with John's basic piano demo from 1979 can tell you it's certainly not one of John's finest songs. In fact, it's quite damn beat. But nonetheless, there is an ethereal, otherworldly quality to this recording, brought more to the fore by the crystal clear cl clarity afforded to us by the AI technology used to, to bring a track to fruition. I also like Paul's middle eight. Uh, you can see that Paul was just itching to, to write something to contribute compositionally to this song. The slide guitar is a nice touch, but I can't help recalling when they all got back together in 94 to record Real Love and Free as a Bird, and how there was a completely unnecessary argument between Paul and George about the use of George's slide guitar, and it not having featured on a Beatles work before. Certainly a nice touch to have Paul finally acknowledging um, George's uh, slide guitar, but he's not uh, a maestro at the slide guitar, and I think it adds little to this song. The orchestration reminds me of Eleanor Rigby, um, and uh, the harmony vocals, which have flown in from Because and Eleanor Rigby, also work really well on this song. I think they've missed a trick in not having John's isolated vocals, either at the beginning or somewhere in the middle of the song. Certainly from watching uh, the documentary that aired yesterday, it was extremely haunting to hear John's voice, isolated vocals, uh, for the first time in such clarity. Anyway, this song brings closure for Paul and Ringo, and also closure for us all. So, what about the documentary that aired the previous uh, evening? Well, it's another masterly Peter Jackson production, extremely moving. It was fantastic to see the original home movie footage being used so effectively. In terms of the physical versions of this song, well, it's going to be out in vinyl and streamed, obviously. Um, and it's really nice touch to have a cassette version uh, with John's handwritten now and then on one side and Paul's handwriting containing the B-side. But there's no CD single. And it's a real disappointment if you've uh, got the other two in what we think is a trilogy of, uh, of works now. It's uh, solely missing the fact that um, there's no CD single in this one. It's home uh, in CD format is on the Red and Blue album, but um, it doesn't justify the expenditure um, just for that one track. And it's also not really a fitting home um, for the finest works of, uh, of the Beatles. To put it on the Red and Blue is a bit of a misnomer, really. It doesn't really sit well with the canon. It should and hopefully will be housed ultimately on Anthology 3 which was its originally intended home. And I very much hope that uh, all of the uh, three anthologies are remastered using AI, because they can certainly do with cleaning up and with adding new material. Tomorrow, we've got to look forward to Peter Jackson's first pop video uh, for now and then. Um, and also he's uh, divulged that that will feature some unseen footage, firstly of the Beatles in, um, in the Levers, uh, footage which has been apparently provided by Pete Best and also some other outtakes which we get to see tomorrow, we don't know exactly what they are but it's all very encouraging. But is this the last Beatles song truly? Well no, this is really hype more than anything. There's plenty of other material uh, left in the can. Apple has a plan for the next five years, we don't know what it is but we can only hope but certainly we know that there's lots of uh, works that's not seen the light of day such as the 14 minute Carnival of Light and a whole host of Paul and John's early demos for songs such as Bad To Me um, and World Without Love. Also, there's a whole range of material from the uh, Let It Be sessions which haven't made its way out yet. Palace of the King of the Birds, Black Dog Blues, there's so many others. So there's clear plenty to come. But my final thought on watching both the documentary and listening to the, to the to Now and Then today was more of then and what we've lost, and obviously what we've lost in John and George. Um, not a fitting epitaph to, to either of them, but certainly very much welcome to have this one. And finally, we've got it, and looking forward to more to follow from Apple in the future.
See you next time.